Good Wednesday morning. Let's see a worldwide pandemic, racial unrest. Oh, and we're in the middle of arguably one of the most contentious elections in our modern history. 2020 has packed a punch and we still got two months left. So this morning we want to check in on you. Sunrisers, let us know how you're doing or how you keep it all together in these times. Use your favorite hashtag Sunrisers. We'll read some of your posts throughout the show this morning. Yeah, that's a lot going on right mm, there. Sure but yeah, is. I've been texting you guys back, so be sure to text us and let us know. Let's get to weather right now. Yeah, Alicia, Guy here, and Guy, you're saying that pretty average outside today, which is yeah. nice because yesterday was so cold. It was. Uh, temperatures are going to feel a, a, a bit better. Uh, still cold because we're below freezing, but you know, 31 around this time of season. Yeah, that's not too bad. Feels like 23 though, so that's the temperature that you're going to want to dress for. Wind chills today will feel like the 20s and 40s, so shaving off maybe just about 5 degrees by later this afternoon, so that should feel better on the skin. We'll see some sunshine with temperatures already in the low 40s shortly afternoon. It looks like two crashes just popped up here on our metro map along uh, 494 down in the southwest corner of the Twin Cities metro. Waking up in Eden Prairie looks like 494 southbound and a little further uh, more east of that in Bloomington, not far from 35W. I'll try to pull them up on some traffic cameras and have an update coming up. Well, happening right now, fears of a second wave of COVID growing larger this morning. So take a look at these maps. So these uh, Midwest states in the blue here, all seeing a surge in cases this week. And then right in the middle, as you can see, Minnesota and Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, Governor Evers urging people to stay home, while here in Minnesota, Governor Walls calling for a goal line stand from Minnesotans. Now, Gordon Severson joins us live with a new push by the governor's office to share more personal stories of Minnesotans impacted by the virus. Yeah, Gia, the governor will be in Moorhead later this morning for a COVID-19 roundtable discussion, and he'll also be joined by an infectious disease ex expert and a nurse to have the healthcare side of things, but they'll also be joined by everyday Minnesotans who have also been impacted by the virus. Now, you know, we've heard all the reports and we've heard the, seen the numbers, but we rarely get to see these personal stories here. Stories like that of Rich Gates and his fiance, Jennifer Nelson. Both of them work in the healthcare field, and they were both recently diagnosed with COVID-19. Rich spent three days in the hospital with severe breathing problems. He's now back home under quarantine. Jennifer, however, says she's showing no symptoms at all. Anybody really can be a spreader yeah. of this without even yeah. knowing. There's potential long-term lung damage with this. Take it seriously. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people think it's a joke or they think it won't happen to me or they just don't care about it. Now, the governor's roundtable discussion will start at 1045 this morning. The governor says this this is, quote, a critical point in our fight against the virus. And basically, he says that as we move into the cold winter months and the holidays, he's asking Minnesotans to come together to try to make sure that everyone stays safe over the holiday season. Back to you. All right, Gordon, thanks for those stories. Now let's dive into the COVID numbers here in Minnesota. Minnesota keeps trending in the wrong direction. Take a look. MDH reporting almost 2,200 new cases yesterday. That is one, two, three, the third highest daily total since the pandemic began. That two week average, this dotted line that you see right here, we're uh, above 1,500 cases per day right now. In Wisconsin, let's take a look at those numbers. State health officials calling it a nightmare scenario, hitting a record amount for number of cases, deaths, and and hospitalizations. More than 5,200 uh, new cases yesterday, and as you can see right here, that is a record. The two-week daily average, there are almost 4,000 cases a day. When it comes to deaths, 64 people died. The last record death count was uh, right here. That was 48 uh, last week, and the state's repeated records in the last week means the outbreak is one of the worst in the country. Six days until the election. Let's catch you up on three big things you need to know before final votes are cast. Developing this morning, a federal appeals court is considering a case challenging Minnesota's seven-day grace period for mail-in ballots. We're still waiting on their ruling. Meanwhile, big news out of the state's second congressional district. The U.S. Supreme Court is rejecting a request from Republican Tyler Kistner to postpone the election. He made the request after the death of third-party candidate Adam Weeks last month. Kistner is challenging incumbent Democrat Angie Craig. And today, the Pence family is spreading out in Wisconsin. The vice president and second lady are holding separate rallies. Mike Pence will be rallying in Mossany, while his wife, Karen, will be talking to voters in Waterloo. Kamala Harris will campaign in Arizona. 
Well, millions of Americans have already cast their votes for the 2020 election, but a recent tweet from the president had us asking, if you change your mind, can you change your vote? In our digital dive, we're going to break down the rules here in Minnesota and in Wisconsin. So yesterday, President Trump sent out this tweet claiming a lot of people, a lot of Americans are searching for information on changing their votes. And Trump said the answer in most states is yes. In Minnesota, that's technically true, but the thing is the deadline to change your vote has already passed. Voters have two weeks before the election to contact their county elections office and cancel their ballots. Over in Wisconsin, they let voters change their ballots as well. But again, you're working against the clock there. If you contact your municipal clerk with enough time, they can cancel your original ballot and issue a new one. The legal deadline, though, to request an absentee ballot by mail there is tomorrow, October 29th. Now, on this past day across the U.S., searches for states where you can change your vote and can I change my vote to Trump were up more than 200 percent. In Minnesota, can I change my vote? Google searches were up 90 percent. And we're just six days away from Election Day. If you still have questions whatsoever about your ballot, tracking your ballot, where you can vote, text the word vote to 763-797-7215 for a link to our voters toolkit. It's a very helpful thing because there are a lot of questions. You know, we just were talking about uh, you already voted and you were mm -hmm. saying there's a lot of judges on there. Mm -hmm. And Chris asked a great question about, you know, do you have to fill it all out for right. your vote to be counted? Exactly. So questions like that, we have all the answers to online. Yeah, these Google trends, I'm pretty interesting. I'm curious to see, uh, you know, I, I, I would want to know how many people actually change their we're votes. We're genuinely yeah. interested. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Alicia. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A woman is speaking out after she was carjacked in South Minneapolis. It happened Friday afternoon near the corner of 50th Street and Choen Avenue. A woman named Susie says four young men took her purse, cell phone and car. Minneapolis police say the same car has been used to commit several other crimes around the city. There have been 61 carjackings in Minneapolis since September 22nd. Mayo Clinic is streamlining COVID-19 contact tracing within its healthcare system. With new digital tools, healthcare workers are notified within two hours of exposure. Prior to that, it took six to 24 hours and was done by phone alone. Help Wanted at UPS and Amazon. Both companies are looking to hire 100,000 seasonal workers to help keep up with demand over the holidays. UPS is holding a virtual job fair this Friday, where it hopes to hire 50,000 people. And the LA Dodgers are your 2020 World Series champs. They beat Tampa Bay last night 3-1 in Game 6. The win came after third baseman Justin Turner left the game in the seventh inning. Get this, because of a positive COVID-19 test. It's the team's first title since 1988. And that's your Wednesday Morning Rush. Guy, let's get to you with our one thing weather today. Yes, yeah, school day forecast looks to be temperatures in the upper 20s by 8 a.m. and then warming up to the mid 40s. We'll see partly sunny skies. And I am uh, tracking a crash here, 494 westbound near Penn Avenue. This is in the south metro, not far from 35W. Kind of hard to see, but it's blocking this left shoulder. Uh, there are some flashing lights, and it is around this bend in the construction zone, so uh, be mindful of that crash. There's also a few other ones around the metro, especially on 494. I'll have more details coming up. Well, there's a lot of uncertainty about the election, and one of them is poll predictions. This morning, we show you why you should be looking at more than just um, should what you should be looking at more than just looking at the numbers. It's time for the why, where we break down the answers to your burning questions. This week, it is all about the election. Political polls, some have faith in them. Others, after the last presidential election, say they should not be trusted. But which is it? Experts say polls can be a powerful tool, but you have to keep certain things in mind. Look at more than the numbers. Here's why. The number crunchers stress that polls are imperfect instruments. They can pull back the curtain and give you a snapshot of what could happen with any race. But keep this in mind. Polls, they're a look at a moment in time, and they only capture what would happen if the election were today. And experts say you need to remember, different pollsters, have different methods, and those methods can vary from race to race. That means it's key to know the questions and who's asking. For example, the candidates or the groups that support them will sometimes conduct polls with questions framed to get certain results. And remember, the only one that counts is the actual vote on election day. That's why it's important to look at more than just the numbers when it comes to political polls. 
And that's the why on polls one week out from Election Day. I was reading something about pollsters the other day, and it used to be they only had to contact 5,000 people to get the necessary 1,200. Mm -hmm. Now they have to contact like 30 to 35,000 people. So not many people won't even take part in right, polls. Right, exactly. A lot of people don't trust it anymore. No. Well, 611, this Halloween is extra scary thanks to COVID-19, but you can still celebrate this morning. The TikTok doc is sharing advice to keep your family safe. Plus, she makes masterpieces from old pieces of wood. How this hobby transformed into a business for one Minnesota woman. Then the home security video that has one man of faith asking all sorts of questions. Ooh, creepy.